Here I am, Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus. In this lesson today in the Academy of... Wow! Man. I'm going to go ahead and talk about a very simple subject, and I'm going to keep it short and simple and sweet as I can. And before I continue, it will be greatly appreciated if you like and subscribe to this channel. That is our channel. Give me some more uh, empowerment and support moving forward. However, this discussion is talking about this thing called men are supposed to provide and procure and protect and women are not. Women, women are simply just coming to the table with their so-called bodies. That they are the table. And another thing is, which it have come to me by... Uh, <laughs> by way of information and other viewers is this so-called solid statement that women aren't usually there to provide that she is not made to provide naturally that she is not born to be the provider of the family she's not born to go out there and get the bag and come back and and uh, raise the kid cut the logs <laughs> right Go hunt the bear and the uh, the deers. Go and procure the steel and metal. Go out in the rain and get the water. And to herd the sheep and the cattle and come back home. And a husband is there holding the baby. Or taking care of the home. Or doing the linen. Get the bath water together. Get the kids ready for school the next morning. Now, contrary to what you think, the subject is basically on this particularly solid statement that's been thrown around often. And, and I'm going to tell you what it is. I just told you, but I'm going to break it down a lot more simple. See, men are sane, and some women, not all of them, that it is in a woman's nature, listen carefully, a woman's nature not to provide for the home it's the woman's nature not to go out there and wrestle with the bear to protect the family and hunt the deer to procure meat and put it on the table basically for some of you who got your thumb in your mouth and you are a child like mentality of an adult and you are the dodo bird and sloth in this academy basically to put it in layman terms you're going to understand is that most people are believing and stating at the same time that women aren't programmed by the nature to do such a thing. You see how I put that together? Programmed by their nature. Now, because I'm Morpheus, this is why this is important to talk about today. Because I want to draw a line towards something that I'm really doing my best to get you all to understand and overstand what I'm saying. Because a lot of you, see, this. I'm going to be honest with you, if I was an alien, if I was, <laughs> uh, the human race, you all are just, y'all a bunch of, I, 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 I got to say, y'all retards. You're, you're stuck on stupid. And you, you're the type of, you will be the type of creature or species who um, I would definitely look over. You wouldn't be saved. I wouldn't come and rescue you. I wouldn't even look twice your direction. As a matter of fact, with my spaceship, my culture, my species, my life, I'd fly right past you as fast as possible and stay at the furthest reaches of the universe because y'all are just playing behind the times. You're behind the times. You're handicapped in your thinking. You're on the brink of de-evolution. You are a fallen state especially America, and you are stuck on sick and stupid because you want to be. Because you make money to be stuck on sick and stupid. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm taking the gloves off of this BS. You're a bunch of children. That's your problem. You're not getting better as a human race. You're getting worse. 
apparently it's evident it's evident around your country it's evident in your life it's evident in your children's eyes it's evident how you carry yourself it's evident in the dumb retard backwards distorted redundant uneducated crap that spews out of your mouth if you sit down and think about the hell of what you're talking about, you will begin to understand, wait, wait a minute. Did I just say that? Yes, you did, bozo. Yes, you did. And the funny thing is, y'all don't realize this till about five to six or 12 years later. You know how you have a discovery of some sort of, for some sort of thing? You, t you think that you have, you've broken the sound barrier. You know, you figured out that fire burns and you understand what electricity is all about. And then all of a sudden, five years later, you figure out something else because it took you that long to figure it out. I would have figured out this damn thing generations beforehand, like 20 years prior to you. Because there's something that I do that you don't do, or if there was an alien or some other species do that you don't do as a human person, and that's called think. It's ridiculous to have to have this conversation. And this is why I tell you this. Because there's more of this is the apparatus sort of thing, but I'm going to talk about one specific subject and I'm not going to give it to you all at one time. Because if you notice in my audios, I'm dropping dimes on you everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, there's a diamond that you can get out of my audios. This is one of them. The average person do not understand that you are typically programmed. I just said the word. You are programmed to do certain things. Some of you are short-sighted. You don't remember. Can't even halfway remember your name because you got to put it in your dumb phone to remind you what age you are or what time of day it is. Or you need a Lexus or a series to tell you what street you're on because you can't remember street signs because you're such a wonderful human race of de-evolution. Where you bypass, you forget so easy that men, almost often 90% of the men, boys, when they're little kids, they are told that it is their job to provide. They are told they have to grow up and get a good job mm -hmm. and to be the protectors, to go out there and get the meat, go out there and hunt the bears. These things are told to these children. They are told to do that. Girls, especially today, by single mothers in a broken home, they're told to go and get the bag. They are told to go provide for themselves. They are told, don't depend on a man, just do it for yourself. A lot of what you are dealing with in your human de-evolution is based on programming by the parents or by your great, great, great grandparents who was morons by those who did not discover uh no those who were born yesterday but thought they knew everything today where most people go by jargon you go by programming you go by what's the newest you go by what's the latest thing oh this is the latest tesla so i'm at the buy it because it's the latest tesla i don't care if it's a pile of crap i just want it I don't care if the Jordans cost me more than my paycheck and it's going to break my pocket spending this type of money for Jordans for my teenagers and kids. But I'm going to do it anyway because of the latest shoes and I don't want them to feel bad as they are walking around teenagers and other people or peers around their age. I want them to look like they're expensive, even though it don't make no it don't make no damn sense. It's the latest thing, so I'm going to get it. It's the latest dumb watch. I'm going to get it. It's the latest idea, so I'm going to do it. It's the latest speech impediment, so I'm going to add that into my video or my audio or my uh, my bro my brochures or my commercial. No, hell, let's go ahead and just put smart on everything, even though it's stupid. This is called smart technology, so I'm going to make smart water. I'm going to make smart watches, smart shoes, smart doors, smart cars, smart idiots, smart thinking dumb thinking and call it smart because you want to make a sale because oh that's the pitch that's the marketing nowadays we got to market the younger people the younger generation so we're going to put smart on it 
and sell it to them because everybody's calling everything smart, even though it's stupid. We put our human, anthropomorphic, weak, fragile ideals on it. We're just going to stamp it as smart with our de-evolution of our species. And still, you don't understand what you're doing. What, why you don't understand what you're doing? It's Again, it's called programming, ladies and gentlemen. You can't say, you cannot say, no, you can, because some of you are bozos anyway, so you say whatever the hell you want to say, even though it don't sound right. No, you should not ever say. How about that? Even though you're going to do it anyway. That, oh, it's in their genes what they are not to do. Nature do play its role. I'm going to shift gears. I'm going to shift gears just for a moment here. Change some things up. Because I'm going to have to talk into, in a different language where some of you can understand. The average common human person has been decoded, uncoded, modified, and programmed since the beginning of time. And if you don't think that it has happened, you are a moron. If you don't think it can be hap that it can happen, you are delusional and you are one of the ones who've been programmed. Do you understand? You've already been decoded several times before. And there's several ways to program you just like you do a computer and normally it's what you put in your mouth and under your skin. That is one of the general ways that happen. But amongst that, there is another programmer called mom and dad. Even though you have control over what you decide to do after you become an adult. Even though you do have free will and free range to decide how you want to live your life, how you wish to live your life. You understand? You still have to decode the programming that's been placed on you by your parents. And what I mean by parents is it doesn't mean your biological parents that brought you into existence. This means your ancestors. This means your teachers. This means your great grandparents or step parents are those who made sure you were safe until you was old enough to provide for yourself. During that time, you need to undo what has been done. You need to understand that during those ages, 18 and younger, you are thriving in someone else's pocket. You was thriving in someone else's idea of life. You was thriving on someone else's perspective of reality versus non-reality assets. So therefore, during this time and some there was always this parent in a broken home or this parent who decided to tell these young women and men what the society's standard was or the programming of the society's acceptance system. Therefore, they bred their children this way. They raised them this way. When the father leaves the house, he tells the, the oldest son, you hold it down while I am leaving. You watch your baby sister while I'm gone. You do this while I'm gone. You're responsible, son, while I am gone. Then oftentimes, especially for the female, is you need to be good. Do good. Do well. Do your homework. Or in some cases, well, now, today, because it's 2021, it is more like, I'm going to say the 2020s. When I say 2020s, I mean this is going to be 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And I already made a prediction. And I'm going to tell you again. I'm going to keep reminding you on every audio. In the year 2023, you're going to see more single women than you ever saw in the history of America. It's going to become real in 2023. And the reason why I'm able to make this prediction is because I always have 10 year trajectory and the way that your world is operating today is you're not going with nature. You're going against nature. So it's going to go against you eventually.
So therefore, you, us as a whole, we are in a dilemma. We are in a fallen state against nature because we are unnatural. However, as children, you can easily program and unprogram by simple lectures and conversations. For years in the past, for years, women and men were told that they were an expectation of a sort. They was expected to do something. I had to edit some things out because it was going to be a little bit too heavy for some of you, especially for YouTube. So I had to cut out some of the things that I was getting ready to say. But basically to condense what I went in on and cut out of this audio for the, for the, for the comfort of you listening. Okay. The average person isn't born the way that they are. There's a lot of things that are genetically inherited and through your instincts that if you practice it enough, you can pass it on to your kids. You can pass it on to the next generation. You can pass it on to the next person. You could give your lifetime experience into your gene pool, into your ideologies, into the energy that you produce with your offspring, especially if you spend enough time around them. Some of you just don't understand how the human body operates. And as I've explained this before, it's like a true uh, smart machine. What I mean by smart machine, it's always learning. It's an AI, artificial intelligence, but it's natural intelligence of your genetics and what happens is when you're around someone long enough you pick up their habits right you got that idea you pick up on them you sometimes if you have a daughter that's with you she pick up on your habits or a son that's around you all the time or uh you raising your family a different way or you're just with a husband or a wife you start liking the things they like or you start doing some of the things that they do and sometimes depending on how close you are to that person, you almost start looking like that person and smelling like them because you've been around them for so long. It's called genetics. It's called chemistry. That's the way the body operates and especially through survival. There was a study years ago. It's not today because today we are sick today. We are better apart than we are together today because of our mentality, because of our, uh, our negative chaos that we bring into our relationship. So it's better not to even unite with anyone because of the potential dangers and idiocy that they bring in your life. However, years ago, they were saying that married people live longer. People who are married, people who are in long-term relationships, not specifically the contract of marriage, but long-term relationships are marriage, are marriage tend to live longer, tend to have a, a a brighter sheen to their face, a happier disposition. But of course, we know that was back in 1950s, 40s. You know, that, that was years before now, the 2020s. Today, marriage is no good. You know, today, you're, you live shorter by being married than you were longer, depending on the people that you are with depending on how much you need to hold your uh, your truest nature away from the person that you are married to, that's a different subject that I'm not going to even talk about. Not yet. Not in this one. Because things have been reversed on its head. So, specifically, what they were saying is, not only that, because you're sharing an energy with that person when you are having a long-term relationship with them. When you're around them for so long, you don't have to depend on just your energy you're depending on the other person's energy as well. So it helps you to continue. It helps you to survive. All right. And it's also, again, that chemistry, that energy of the chemistry and the bonding that you have with that person. And it's good for your genetics. It's good for your phylum. It's good for your uh, your everyday performance. So that being said, this so-called... Uh, uh, statement in aggressive statement for some um, lecturers, some people around your social media and your world telling you that women aren't necessarily made per se to provide. 
Well, I, Morpheus, am made to explain that and break it down to you. Okay? Most things are malleable. Most things are programmable. And lots of standards have been given towards the man and the woman as they were teenagers and kids. Where over time it became an inherent sort of energy that was expected of them or her to carry themselves a certain way. Yes, the woman have a certain propensity in her life. She have a certain potential to do things. Same as men are. Men are built certain ways to be the protectors or to be stronger or to carry the heavy load and to be the leader of their uh, surroundings or of their world or relationship. All right, that's just simply by nature not by the social construct. But here, the social construct is telling us in the 2020s that men and women are the same. But yet, it's missing its contents. It's missing the, the, the valuable points within it. You got this particular husk of an idea, but you don't have the contents in it. You don't even know what it contains. That's how dumb the social me the social construct is today, where they tell you, well, you're all the same. But when it comes down to nature, when it comes down to facts, when it comes down to how things work, you don't even get the facts with that. You don't you don't get the uh, the meat inside the burrito. All you get is the the tortilla. All you get is a husk of an idea, but it's it's being given to those who don't have an an internal thought. It's given to the donkeys who don't think for themselves, those who need to be programmed because they can't control themselves. So they need to be controlled by the social construct called social engineering or for some people know it famously known as the new world order. Because you got new type of species walking the face of the planet who aren't humans like they used to be. I'm just keeping it real, straight, raw in facts. OK. But does that mean she is not made to procure this bag and share it with her man. That doesn't mean that she's not made to do it. It's because the world and the society haven't gave her that expectation. Did you hear what I just said? The programming wasn't there. The programming was for men to be the providers no matter what. That is what the programming was. The programming wasn't for women to be the providers. The women's job are per se, her ability was to be a balanced sort of person, not to be an unbalanced person. Men, of course, have to have their balance as well, but they've been mistreated and disenfranchised to be unbalanced. How does this work? I don't want to go into the details, but I'm going to tell you one specific thing that a lot of you may understand. It's called the red pill. The red pill is made from this. Do you understand? The red pill, the, the recipe for the red pill is in this particular fact. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you about the woman being balanced and I'm going to tell you about the man being unbalanced. Does that mean he's not providing a balance of uh, uh, well, potential performance and gratified uh, uh, success and resources into the relationship? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Men have been deceived for so long, for which he himself have been told to provide, protect, and to give on a constant basis. To constantly be this traditional man of the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and continue to go out there, work his fingers to the bone, break his back, sacrifice his life, fight for his, uh, his girlfriend and his wife, uh, uh, sacrifice his time, his peace, and his joy. No matter what the condition is, no matter what type of situation that he puts himself into, it is his place as a man. Listen, it's his place as a man to put himself on the front line, regardless of his safety, regardless of his uh, uh, love of life or his hobbies, the things that he enjoy doing, regardless of how he feels or he really feels about a situation. Nobody really gives a damn. You understand? But yet, who did all the shifting here in the society? Who changed a lot of things? Who kept marching for what? For an equal ground, for equality, for, oh, I want to do it. He can do it. I can do it better. Okay, so here you go with the woman 
who over the, the past few years decided to say, well, I want to do what he's doing. I don't want to be this balanced person anymore. I want to go ahead and, and, and get in his shoes too. Now, let me, go, let me go ahead and retract what I was getting ready to say. Let me, let me tell you this. Years ago, it was just the point where she was taking care of the home. She was taking care of him, providing uh, the necessary comforts, being supportive, submissive, kind, young, fertile, decent, right? No Instagram, no Facebook, no DMs, very loyal to him, right? It wasn't her, she didn't want to, and it, it wasn't too much of an interest for her to get out there to the mainstream world and go out there and get the bag, so to speak. See, a lot of these women have been misled. They've been lied to to think that getting the bag is the most, it's the it's a fun thing to do. It's exciting to do. Going out there and, and working a nine to five job or getting a career, career, it's the best thing to do. They find out the hard way that it is not easy getting up in the morning sometimes. They find out the hard way that they got to punch in and punch out on the clock. They find out the hard way that if they don't pay their bills, their light's going to get turned off. Hold on, let me take a drink on this one. They find out the hard way that it's not as fun as they thought it was when men have to get up in the morning and put the boots on and leave the home to provide food and shelter for his family. But guess what? There are some women, there are some of them who would uh, who would say, yeah, I love it. I love doing this. I enjoy it. This is what I like to do. I feel like it. I just, I, I enjoy getting up in the morning and suffering like that. I don't mind it. I like my uh, uh, my 11 hour a day job. I love it. I love my nine to five Monday through Friday. I enjoy it. I feel like I'm really doing something moving forward. Well, I got a really gut punch reality for you. For a lot of people, because it may not be for you, but it's a majority of them. But I'm going to tell you like it is. Most times the reality is they don't have nothing else better to do at home. They're bored. They're bored with themselves. They're bored with what this thing called family is. And they are disappointed. Some of them, not all of them, they only get that way when they're like 54, 56 years old. Some of them when they're 40 and 30, they don't quite get it yet. Until they're walking around. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Because I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to cut some knees again. Let me stop. Because you know how harsh I can be. You know it. You know it. I'll make you chew on an onion. And that's not nice. It's not nice. They don't find out until later on in their life, the hard way. And this, let me tell you how I can back this up. I'm going to tell you how I can back it up. If you have a life, if you got something to do, if you have a hobby, if you're writing books, I write books. If you are actually doing something with yourself at home, you got, but you got other uh, prospects, okay? You got other hobbies. You do knitting, yawning, cooking, creating recipes, uh, talking to other mothers, coming up with different programs that can help people in society. You, you're not really interested in working a nine to five job. You're not going to be interested in saying, I'm excited to be away from my home for uh, nine to 10 hours. Not if you got something else going on for you. Not, not if you got something at home. I can even say that for myself. You know, not, not if you you're doing something for yourself, not if you're uh, succeeding outside of the home. You know, you you got proceeds somewhere you are. You're doing bookkeeping or something. You're you're doing something. That is more important to you at home to do at home with the nine to five with your eight or nine hours or 10 hours that you could be that you're spending on your job. See. When a person really, when you got something to do at home, when you got a hobby, when you have a life to live, you don't want to be away from that life. You don't want to be away from it because you know that you're going to be wasting time. It's almost like if you're making, uh, uh, let's say, for example, you're, you do, you do painting. How about this? For some of you, you paint for a hobby. You love painting. Sometimes you sell a painting. Sometimes you don't. But you do have a full room full of painting sitting there. You got your paintbrush, you got the canvases. 
you're like a vintage point high up somewhere. You love that place. It's a place of peace. You might have your wine bottle in the corner and you play your radio every now and then. You just go in there and you feel like you are in heaven. I said feel like. You do feel like it. That's the feeling here. And your essence is glowing. And let's say that you are halfway through a painting. Listen, you need to check this out. You're halfway through a painting where uh, you got the outlining of it. You got the tracing of it together. And you know what the background's going to be. And then, uh-oh, time to go to work. It's time to go to work. So what you do is you got to pause what you're doing. Go ahead and get yourself ready. Get get your gear together. Get your lunch your lunch bag and get your hair done. Go wash up and everything like that. Then you got to jump in the shower, whatever you do. Then you go on to this hour, this hourly job, which is probably eight to nine, eight to five, eight to four. What, it, what would that be? Eight to four, nine to five, something like that. Or for some of you, third shift, second shift. Okay. All the while, while you're on your job, you're thinking about that painting. I mean, you have to, if that's your hobby, if you enjoy it, if that's everything that you like, if that's what gives you um, joy and peace. And every part of your body and self, you're going to want to go back to the painting. Every time you talk to somebody, you're thinking about the painting. Every time you are having a bad feeling and you don't feel so comfortable, you just think about your painting and it'll make you feel better. And so imagine you going back to the house and you're getting ready to get back to the painting. You'll still be excited, but it's halfway done. And so what you do is you're switching energies now. Now you you the energy that you started off with at first, which would have probably finished it to make the painting look differently. Now you come in at the painting with a new different perspective, with a different energy that clearly isn't your own. It's the energy that you have been getting from your nine to five. It's an energy that you've been giving away to the world. It's the energy that you have been giving as a receptionist or as a uh, what do you call that? A, 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 a telemarketer or as a telephone sales girl or boy or somebody. You're giving it away. And so that energy you bring back home to you and the more you do it, the less of a passion you're going to have for your painting. The less the more it's going to sit there and be neglected and the more time is going to be given to your organization or to your job or to going out to get in the bag because most women that I have met, okay, when I visit them or I hang out with them, most times they don't want me to go into the room. And it's not because there's nothing in there. It's because it's a trash heap. It's because she's never at home. Her house is trashy. Her front room is trashy. There's dishes in the sink. There's compiled clothes all over the bed. There is shoes all over the bed and all over the floor. The 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 uh, the window is halfway closed. The uh, what do you call that? The blinds is, is pretty much broken. Right. Everything is not clean like it's supposed to be. Everything is out of order because she have to go get the bag and she she have the nerve to get on social media. She got the nerve to jump on YouTube and pretend it's, her life is in order. She got a nerve to say that she is a, a, a strong influencer, that she is a teacher, that she is so great and her life is well and put together. I make a hundred and thousand. I make a hundred thousand dollars a year. I am doing well. A hundred thousand dollars and more. You can't tell me anything. But her house is a piece of trash. Because she kept going out there, oh, I want to get the bag. I'm going to get the bag. Men can do it. I can do it too. I love doing this. I love neglecting myself for money. I'm on this bead for a moment. I know this ain't the subject, but I'm talking about it anyway. And I'm not going to stop until I'm done. You hear me? I'm not going to stop until I'm done, whether you like it or not. I'll get back to the main subject. Just shut your mouth and listen. So it's not so fun. It's not so great. It's not so gratifying. So once she once she realizes that it's no longer the dream that she thought it would be. Oh, men can do it. I can do it, too. 
she would do it long enough, listen, just long enough to find out that she's at a different level than what she needs to be at. Now she's making more money than the average man. Or she's at a certain, uh, what do you call that? Non-compatible state of mind. Did you hear what I just said? Non-compatible state of mind with the men that she meet. She wants them to have her status or more. But the guys who she do take care of, if she ever comes into that situation... And he's only making, let's say, for example, sixty thousand a year, and she's making, and he, she's making the one hundred thousand a year, something like that. Okay. Depending on the situation, she'll do it for a short amount of time, or especially if she, if he's making less than that, she'll do it for a short amount of time. But she's like, well, something's wrong here. Excuse me. Something's wrong here. And he loses his job, or he, he's switching one job to the next. Or he's having a, a, a low valley sort of situation in his life that he just needs to overcome. Because remember, men are going through a lot. Men have been through a lot. Men have suffered a lot in their life. So they're not automatically, automatically going to go from uh, poor to rich overnight. It's going to take some suffering before he is able to get up on his feet. But she don't think like that anyway, because why? When she was a kid... Her mommy and her dad never told her that, hey, lady, one day you might have a man that you might have to take care of. Nobody wants to talk about that. Listen, listen, nobody wants to talk about that because, they're like, oh, that's not manly. She shouldn't do that because she's the woman. That's not what her nature says. That's where your great parents, your great great parents are your parents today are your bozo father and bozo mother haven't told you or isn't telling you. Life comes with conditions, ladies and gentlemen. Life throws you a curveball that you as morons of a human race don't describe or talk about because you're so smart with your dumb phone around your wrist or in your pocket. When she have needed to be taught just as well as the man that, hey, yes, it is good to Go out there and find a man who can provide for you, who could do what he can do for you within his means to do so. Did you understand what I said? I didn't say the dollar symbol. Did I say rich? Did Morpheus say rich? Did Morpheus say this man have to be a six figure dude? I didn't say that. Did I say that? I said a man provide within his means. But there will be some times, sweetheart, where you're going to have to be the one to provide for him because this is the 2020s. Listen, listen the hell up. Shut your mouth and listen. This is the 2020s, ma'am, where you women have fought for equality. You women have fought to go get the bag now. You women have fought to be in a financial position. So you're going to be in a position where there's going to be some men, not that they are lame. Not that men are lame because they make more than you. Let me say that again. It is not that men are lame because they make more, <laughs> make less than you. Not more, less. They're just not on the plateau that the women are. They're just not as, as fortunate as the women are. And it doesn't mean that they're not ambitious. The world that we live in today usually steps on a man's neck than to help him up, but praises the woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm talking about? Or are you just plain stuck on stupid? Men don't get the same privileges as women. Men on the often are going to make or suffer a little bit or go through the unnecessary gauntlet of conditions before women even know how to spell the word gauntlet. Do you got me? So because women think that getting the bag is the best thing to do instead of being a mother or a wife at home. Oh, I know I stepped on somebody's toes right there. Well, get your damn shoes out of the way. <laughs> so because of the disfranchisement supported by the systems that you have in your social construct, they end up, most times, women end up in the position where men are in the low valley. 
Men are in their struggling state of being. Men are just simply making simple dollars a year. Men are simply common men who are just functioning daily just to make it daily. That doesn't mean that he's a bozo. That don't mean he's a loser or he is a dusty. That don't mean he's non-ambitious. He's a man and he needs to be respected as a man or as a person. How about that? So unfortunately, he runs across this girl who wasn't taught that there will be times where she would have to flip the bill. Did you hear what I just said? Or am I speaking am I speaking different language you don't understand? Am I speaking alien language that you don't understand? There will be times where she's going to have to provide for him. Do you understand? There will be times where she's going to have to pay the bill. There's going to be some times where she's going to have to get down off of her high horse or kick down off of her high horse. Yeah, I said it. To face reality that he put money in the coffer. Well, ma'am, you're going to have to do it, too. Men have been doing this for years. You wanted to take the man. You wanted to take the pedestal. You want to take the position. You wanted to be the leader. Good luck. Eat your onions and be happy because you wanted it. So therefore, you should be responsible to take the responsibility. Be accountable for making more money in the relationship. Be accountable for being in a position that you want to be in. Does that mean that he's dusty? No. Does that mean that he's trying to live up underneath you like some type of peon boy who never grew up? No. You asked for this and you was given it by your social construct. Let me remind you, your womanist social construct. So now that y'all have made your bed, you're going to have to lay in it because your mom and your dad failed to tell you the truth. Simply put, once again, the programming wasn't there because most people who have de-evolved and who have not evolved, as I just described to you in the earlier portions of this audio, that humanity isn't getting better. They're getting worse. OK, they still got this mindset where men are supposed to be traditional. Men are supposed to. Oh, you're supposed to still provide and and deal with the rain and the storm and getting your legs and your life chopped off. But hey. Allow her to do and get away and feel and conjure and, and evolve, excuse me, de-evolve in any type of form that she wants to and continue to accept her. Even though she's not the traditional woman, we want you to be the traditional man. Listen, even though she's not a traditional woman, we, the society, want you to continue to be a traditional male man. Of the past where you're chivalrous. You lay down the red carpet. You open up the door. You provide. You protect. You give. You help with the resources. You support. Right? You dodge a bullet for her. Whatever the situation is. While else she's still being the one behind your back. Which is doing the dirty, dirty. And you don't know about it. Having children that don't belong to you. And you don't know about it. Being with your brothers, your fathers, I guess we can always say your sisters too, and you don't know about it, but yet you are still expected to be a traditional male. The results is a raised woman and a put down man. That's the result. The results is a society where men are going to be struggling. Women are going to be just fine. Regardless of how ratchet she is, she's going to be praised regardless of what type of bad behavior she has. So therefore, the status of men are typically going to be lower than the woman. That doesn't mean that he's a lower guy. That doesn't mean he's a lesser being. That doesn't mean he needs to be disrespected, ma'am. That don't mean he's pointless. No, he's in a position According to the times, according to the conditions of the society and the expectations. And rising above that is going to require even more blood, sweat and tears that not many people have the ability or the opportunity to do so or to survive from. That hustle can be very treacherous. What should have happened was, with the changing of times, the so-called 
ancestors or both so grandparents and mothers and fathers should have told their daughters right along with I can go out there and make money just as him to say, well, if you're going to make the money, he who pays, plays. You understand? If you got the money, you have the potential to do what needs to be done. Don't complain if you got to flip the bill. So you got too many blue pill beta fathers who are like, well, I want my daughter to end up with somebody who is better than her. Who makes more money because he was dumb enough not to understand this word called hypergamy. He was too dumb to get the red pill and understand that women don't date down. They got this thing called uh, called dating up. He was too dumb to understand that she's going to be putting herself in a position 99% of the time to be the breadwinner. And what are the odds of meeting men who are at her level or more at a time where men have been getting kicked down and disrespected? Duh, right? The professor can tell you that. Like, duh, you can't figure that out, boy? That doesn't fit your schedule in your logic? Or are you just feminizing? You thinking with your feminine energy instead of thinking like a man's supposed to? Or blatantly, somebody should just come around and just say, you're just plain stupid. You're stupid. By not following the time. You know how you watch the newspaper and you watch the news or something like that, and they'll tell you that a hurricane is coming. And they'll tell you Hurricane Katrina or something is on its way. And you watch this, you know you're gonna be prepared for it, especially if you're living in that area. That's what it's been like. You I mean, we're dumb enough not to understand how this thing when the, the womanism or feminism and stuff like that kicked off. With women talking about equality, my body, my choice, my body, my choice. Okay, y'all seen these things happening, coming from afar, just like the hurricane. The, the newscaster said, hey, hurricane's coming, and you just stood there staring, unprepared. And now you're living out of bunkers, you didn't, you eating ramen noodles. Now you're, you're in the drenches because you didn't prepare for this. That's the same as understanding that women would have and need to and is in a position now that she stuck herself where she has to be this person that can give now because she took too much did you hear what i just said she have to give back now because she took too much let me say that again she have to give back because she took too much Therefore, it is not the time for men to still think this is 1940, 50, and 60 where chivalry was thriving. It's the time now where they who pay, play. She wanted to get up on the high horse and ride it like she's the white knight soldieress. So she needs to understand that if you want to be the boss, you got to pay the costs.